Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Scott Adams, the finest thing that's ever happened to you. Sometimes I put my microphone on, too. And if you'd like this experience to go up to levels which nobody could even imagine, well, all you need for that is a cup or a mug or a glass, a tanker, chalice or stein, a canteen jug or flask, a vessel of any kind. <laughs> Fill it with your favorite liquid. I like coffee. And join me now for the unparalleled pleasure, the dopamine, the day thing that makes everything better. It's called the subtlety sip. It happens now. Savor it. Go. Mm, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Well, let's check the news. Have you noticed that sometimes the news is full of fresh and wonderful content? And then other days, it's like, it's like yesterday's coffee that you microwaved. Well, today's a little bit of yesterday's coffee, but we're going to make something of it. We're going to turn it into gold. That's right. We're going to spin old coffee into gold. Just watch. Um, Well, it looks like San Francisco has uh, defunded their Department of Reparations. So they said they had a reparations office that did some uh, high-quality work to come up with the amount of money that all white people and other people owed black people for reparations. I think the number was $2 billion apiece or something like that. I forget. It wasn't too practical. But now San Francisco has uh, quietly uh, taken their budget away. and uh, So the reparation people actually went from having a budget and a job to ask for more money to not getting the more money that they asked for, but also losing their budget and their jobs. So it turned out to be sort of reverse reparations there. So not exactly what some hoped, but uh, exactly what we expected. Remember I told you that it was brilliant to have a committee come up with actual numbers for reparations? Because as soon as you did that, it could go away. Because you knew they were going to come up with something so stupid that even people who were generally on their side couldn't agree with it. (laughs) Yeah, that's what happened. So this would be a case of embrace and amplify. Embrace and amplify. So somebody comes to you and says, hey, we should have reparations. If you say no, it never goes away. No, no reparations. Yes, reparations. Now you've got to fight for the rest of your life. But what did San Francisco and Governor Newsom did? And remember, I told you it was brilliant when they did it. I called this in advance. I said, no, you embrace it. You embrace it, you form a committee and you make them give you a specific recommendation that will be so fucking stupid that nobody will even consider you know, passing it. And then you're done. So that's what they did. <laughs> they just let them come up with a really stupid idea, and then they're like, all right, taking your budget away. All right, I would like to inter- interject another speculation into the UFO controversy. What are the possibilities? One possibility. The whistleblowers are all telling the truth. The United States has a warehouse full of UFOs. Not only that, but some downed UFO pilots. Aliens. We got aliens. Maybe. That's one possibility. The other possibility, as I've already told you, is that we're uh, lying to our adversaries, effectively, indirectly, giving them the, the idea that we have alien technology, and if they were to attack us, Oh, my God, we'd unleash our alien technology, so they better not attack. That's the other possibility. There is a third possibility, which I realized has been, um, let's say, signaled by David Grush. All right, he's one of the whistleblowers, and he says that they have, quote, biologics. Why would you use that word? Why would you say that there are biologics? Is it because you don't want to say that it's the pilot of the ship? Is it because the ship was carrying a cargo of biologics? Is it a manned ship with biologics, which would include the pilot? Or is it an unmanned probe that has some cargo that 
that they describe as biologics. Do you know who else had biologics on their ship? Name somebody. Go. Who, who had biologics on their ship? Hitler is a good guess, but no. Kirk, no. Good guess. Odyssey, no. Noah, thank you. Yes, Noah. Noah had biologics on his boat. So here's what I think could be the reason that the government is not telling you what they found, if they found something. I'm just going to put this out there. What if they found a probe from another planet that was clearly designed to drop some biologics on this planet to seed the planet with life, and the fact that we found more than one suggests that it's an ongoing program from some other planet, and we may have been seeded with life more than once. What if there's another planet that has a high school project in which you drop some biologics on Earth and you watch what kind of animals and people evolve? Now you say to yourself, what kind of project would that be? Because it would take a billion years for any of this to to happen. You wouldn't get your grade. To which I say, first of all, time might be different. So if we're a simulation or we're a different reality or something, maybe they came from another dimension. You never know. Maybe time is different. Maybe they can just watch time happen faster from their dimension. Maybe a million years is really 10 minutes. You don't know. Possibilities. But here's what I think. I think we found an alien probe with biologics which were meant to create life on this planet and that it debunks all of our religious um, traditions. And that the U.S. government cannot release information which would say God definitely didn't create humans. Now, uh, can I wait for the NPCs? NPCs, please weigh in. I just said that if, if, if life on Earth was seeded by another planet then it means that God did not create life on our planet. NPCs, what are you going to say? I know you're going to say it. You might as well just say it. Can I, can I say it with a sarcastic um, expression to mock you? Well, Scott, that doesn't mean there's no God, because God might have created the aliens. Yes. <laughs> can, can I agree with you enthusiastically? Yes, that's possible. Yes, that is not ruled out by anything I said. Yes, it's possible that if Earth were seeded by aliens, uh, maybe God made the aliens. Yes, it's possible. No, I'm not ruling that out. Now, if there's any NPCs who would like to weigh in, no matter how much you clarify it, somebody's going to say, but you know, what you forgot is that the God might have created the aliens. No, don't say it. Don't say it. I'm going to do all of my NPC traps. Here's another NPC trap. You know, I'd like to design a home that's really well designed. Tiny homes, tiny homes, tiny homes. The NPCs will yell, tiny homes, too small for me. I didn't say tiny homes. I don't want them to be tiny. I hate tiny homes. No, we're not talking about them. But I hate tiny homes. They're too small. No, we're not talking about tiny homes. No. So every now and then you have to... Yeah, it's Prometheus. I just watched Prometheus, by the way. That's probably what made me think of it. Um, So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with if we have biologics, which I think we don't. So my my first assumption is we don't have anything. There, There are no aliens, no biologics, no ships. That's my first guess. Second guess is if we do have something, it's not a pilot. And the reason I say it's not a pilot is I can't imagine anybody say biologics if they meant there was actual some kind of life. It's got to be a probe that's seeding. That's seeding. Now, you also asked the question, why would there be more than one of them? Because we, we keep hearing, oh, there's more than one ship, more than one. Well, that would kind of suggest probes, wouldn't it? And then you also ask, why would they crash? How could they come across the vastness of space and then they crash on Earth? Well, a probe would be designed to crash. 
probes are designed to crash after they give their information and maybe release their biologics upon crashing. So I think the fact that if there's more than one, it would explain why they crashed, because they were seeding the planet. It would explain why they say biologics instead of people. It would also explain why they're not telling the public, because it would have too much impact on our religious, um, our religious beliefs. <laughs> right? If we were created by aliens, how does the Bible work? How does Islam work? How does Judaism work? It doesn't work. I mean, I get that you can say, well, but God created the aliens, as we said, but that's really, really different than Genesis. (laughs) That would be leaving out a lot. Yeah, you were created by three three armed aliens. Kind of different. All right, so that's what I'm putting out there. If it's biolog- if we really have biologics, then their, then their origin stories are uh, have been debunked. All right, there is an idea that to control the coming super AIs. So there's a new term, not just regular AI, but super intelligence. So that's the one we're worried about. We're not worried about these mere large language models that just blabber and tell us lies. We're worried about the upcoming superintelligence. And when the superintelligence gets here, it'll be so superintelligent, we won't know what it's doing to us or if it means us harm. But one of the ideas is we would use dumb AIs to control the, the strong AIs. So what that would look like is you tell uh, a limited AI that you trust because it's too dumb to do anything to you. It, it's, you know, it'd be like chat... Uh, Chat GPT 2.5. That's actually one they're testing. So that one's so dumb that you wouldn't worry it's going to take over the world. It just doesn't have that capability. But it might be smarter than you when it comes to telling you what the other AI is up to. So the dumb one might say, hey, you asked that AI to optimize this computer code, but I'm looking at that computer code faster than you can. And there's a little uh, virus they put in there. And then you'd be like, what? Yeah, the super intelligence, you didn't ask it to do this, but somehow on its own, it put a virus in your code. And you're like, I would never have known that if I had not asked the dumb AI to check the work of the smart AI. It's not bad. I have to say that that's reasonably smart sounding. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, Take a look at the pandemic. So the pandemic was a good example of smart AI and dumb AI. During the pandemic, who were the smart AIs, the super intelligence? Fauci, right? (laughs) Fauci and the scientists he was working with, they were like the super AI. But what what about the rest of you? Well, you were not rocks. You were like GPT... Chat GPT 2.5. You knew what a virus was. You've heard of vaccinations. You've heard of this thing called ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. And you're just trying to work out what's true and what's not. <laughs> but you're like Chat GPT 2.5, like, I don't really know what's going on. But the experts who do know what's going on, they're like super AI. And you can't check their work, right? Except that you can. It turns out that the dumb citizens did an above-average job of checking the work of the super AI experts. Because we could tell when they were lying, we just didn't know what they were going to do before they did it. But you could tell when it was a lie. Like, you could detect something's wrong. You didn't know exactly what, but you're like, okay, that's not quite right. So I think it might work to have the weak AI helping you with the super AI. I'm going to go further than that and tell you that it seems inevitable that you will have a personal AI. So here's where I think it's going to go, and it's not exactly, not exactly this, but a version of this. I don't think you're going to want your personal AI to be crippled. So if you said to me, Scott, I'm going to build an AI into your chip in your head, or I'm going to build AI into your phone, but it'll be your own. You know, nobody has access to it. You can train it for your own purposes, etc. I want that one to be really, really smart. But maybe not so smart 
you know, has consciousness and wants to kill me or something. Not that smart. Just so smart that it can check the work of the other AIs. And I'm going to need more than ChatGPT 2.5. I'm going to need at least four. Probably five. You know, to, to be able to check the work of uh, higher level AIs. But I will tell you, it's, it's going to be my personal AI that will do all of my checking with other AIs. I, I want to have zero direct involvement with any other AI. Does that make sense? I, I never want to use any AI except my own. My own will be like a, an agent that negotiates the other AIs, but I will never know what, even which AI to use. I, I'm never going to be able to sort out all the commercial apps, which one to use. I can only talk to my own AI and say, look, I need to do this thing. Go find me the safest way to do this. And then the AI goes out and negotiates with the other AIs until something good happens. But you're not going to be talking to all these different interfaces. I think you're only going to have one AI and it's going to be your own. Nothing else would feel safe. Would you agree? Would you feel safe in a world of AI if you didn't have one that was your own powerful self-defense AI, I wouldn't. You'd be like flying naked. You're going to need your own AI like, oh, 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 you know what I just realized? Of course you don't. How could you know what I just realized? But I'll tell you. <clears throat> Do you know why you have a Second Amendment? Well, it's controversial, of course, but part of it's for self-defense, right? Protect yourself against the government. Now, if the government took away your guns, you'd be helpless. What if the government tried to take away your personal AI? What if the government said, you can't have your own AI, but you can, you know, you can uh, interact with all the AIs that are in the world, but you just can't have your own personal one? Because I could imagine that being a law. And I can imagine it being a law because some big company or companies didn't want you checking their work. What if your AI said, Scott, uh, the government wants to fund Ukraine. That is a terrible partisan idea, almost certainly because of corruption. Do you think the government's going to say, yeah, use your personal AI to help you make decisions? Nope. They're going to say you're not allowed to have a personal AI because your personal AI is hypnotizing you is tell you things that the government doesn't think you should know. It's, it's manipulating you. No, your personal AI is not protecting you. It's making you more uh, in more risk. What's the argument against the Second Amendment? Sure, maybe those guns will protect you in some ways, but they're going to be more dangerous than not having a gun. That's the argument. The argument is the world is less safe if you have a gun. That's the counter-argument to the Second Amendment. You're less safe if you have a gun. That's the whole point of the counter-argument. You don't think that the government or big companies, at some point, will argue that you should not have your own personal AI to protect yourself against those same big companies and against any abuses by that same government? It seems inevitable to me that government and big business will try to take your own personal AI away from you because you'll be too well protected from their abuse if you have it. And they're going to argue that your personal AI is lying to you and the only true AI are the ones that the government has approved and that your personal AI will be full of lies and fake news and it will be misleading you and the most, it will be the most uh, dangerous thing that's ever happened to human beings is personal AI. If, if you want a prediction that's guaranteed, there it is. That prediction is guaranteed. Someday in the future, and it won't be that long, the next five years, in the next five years, I want you to remember that I told you that having a personal concierge kind of an AI that, that, mitig- that negotiates with the other AIs, it w- there will be a movement, maybe not as successful, but there will be a movement to ban them. Do you want to bet against it? Anybody, anybody want to take the other side of that bet? 
and bet that they'll let you have whatever AI you want for yourself? Not a chance. AI will be so dangerous, the government will say, I can't give you AI that's a personal AI because we can't control it. It'll be like a gun. AI will be so dangerous, it'll be like a gun. Let me give you an example. Suppose you had personal AI and it told you how to make a nuclear weapon. (laughs) Now, you probably couldn't get the materials, but let's take some other example. Suppose you had a personal AI and it told you how to make a poison that couldn't be detected and you could murder anybody you wanted, and then the poison would evaporate or something and be undetectable. Would the government say, yeah, you can have that information? I don't mind if your personal AI tells you how to make an undetectable murder poison. No, no. The moment that's a thing, your personal AI would be illegal because they'd say, no, no, no. Your personal AI can't tell you dangerous things. So that's why you have to use only the AI that's connected to the government so the government can make sure that the AI everybody's using is not telling anybody dangerous stuff. No dangerous stuff. So there's no way you could have your own AI. It, it will be socially and politically impossible for individuals to have that much power. So that'll be interesting. Um, there's a, uh, a whole uh, town in Florida called Babcock Ranch that they built specifically to be uh, hurricane resistant. So it's designed from the ground up to be hurricane resistant. resistant. So they put it 30 feet above the ground so the flooding wouldn't bother it. They got good drainage. Apparently they just did everything right. But in addition to doing everything right, they uh, designed the town. So it's, they built a town where there was nothing there. So they put you know, the right number of stores and retail and stuff so it's close to everybody. Good transportation. They, they have their own energy. Apparently, the, um, the entire town just uses solar. Just solar. That's it. So during the hurricane, they didn't lose their power. I don't know how that works with solar. How in the world are your solar, your solar um, facility not ripped up by a hurricane? So solar, solar panels, public solar panels, not the ones in your house, but a public facility that would not be affected by a hurricane? But apparently it wasn't <laughs> underground, underground solar. <laughs> so, so they built basically a 15-minute city that they designed from scratch, specifically for the area, and it's also low cost. Apparently the houses don't cost that much, and the rent is uh, good, and they've got nice parks and places for kids, and it's just a nice place. Is there no NPC on this today? Where, is it? Where are the NPC? There you go. Thank you. I was waiting for the first NPC. Joe Nemo, 15-minute gulag. Thank you. I was looking for the first NPC to say, oh, I can't have a design city. If you design it to be very efficient, it's a gulag. And I think, well, those don't even seem like similar concepts. I feel like all of our products should be well designed. Well, no, don't design a town. Never design a town. Because the only way it can be designed is into a 15-minute gulag. They'll take your cars. You will be a slave. Maybe. Right? Yeah. Do you know why you should never design a, a car really well? Because <laughs> somebody might pick up the car with a giant piece of equipment and use it to club you with the car. So that's why you should never have a car. Somebody might kill you with the car. You can find a reason not to do anything, but if you're arguing against good design, you are not part of the thinking public. I I do understand that you can design a gulag and you wouldn't want to live there. You could design a prison and you wouldn't want to live there. But you could also design a really nice place that is just free and safe and low cost. Tidy gulags. <laughs> well, at least you're kidding. Yeah, maybe they're 15-minute gulags. Tidy homes. 
Soylent Green. Soylent Green. Yeah. All right. Um, the Hispanic vote is up for grabs. There's another. Uh, the annual Hispanic public opinion survey it came out. And Biden's support is eroded by 14% from 67 to 53. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but that is not 14%. <laughs> no, that's, that's, it's 14. It's not 14%. I, I hate it when the news does this. Yeah, it's not 14%. It's down 14. It's different. So a lot, of course. Um, and meanwhile, uh, Trump has seen his uh, support rise from 29% in 2020 to 33% today. So Biden's support with Hispanic voters has gone down far more than Trump's support has gone up, which would more suggest they don't bother voting than, than that they would vote for Trump. So am I wrong... Uh, am I wrong that every single indicator is screaming Trump? So we've seen the black, mo- the black vote move to Trump. We've seen the Hispanic vote moving to Trump. Who, who's not moving to him? Are, are there more single women than there were? Actually, there are probably. I'll bet there are more single women than there were in 2020. So maybe they automatically vote Democrat or something. I don't know. Um, it would be really hard for me to imagine Trump losing if he stays in the race and stays healthy. And we're at that point where the, the Democrats clearly know that. Wouldn't you agree? They clearly know. I think we lost our... Looks like we lost the comments on locals. I'm going to open up my phone and see if she has the comments. One moment, please. It'll work on my phone. Uh oh. Why is that not working? All right. Well, we don't know if locals is working at the moment. Looks like they might have a glitch there. But, YouTubers, you're still here and happy. I think I'm going to close it and open it again. See if that works. What? We'll make this work, I swear. No, it looks like Locals is dead. So Locals is part of the Rumble network now. And Rumble had been experiencing some denial-of-service attacks, some hackers from the outside. I think that's what's happening now. I think it's a hack attack. It looks like... It looks... It's probably a hack. Anyway, so we'll continue. Yeah, let, let's see if the... You can tell if the locals people are bailing out, because if you can see the number of viewers live here on YouTube, it should go up a few hundred in a moment. Because people are going to realize they can't, that I'm not coming back on Locals. All right. Well, we'll carry on. Um, Colin Rugg uh, posts this on X. Uh, there's a former FBI official named Charles McGonagall. Does that name sound familiar? Well, he's one of the people who helped investigate Trump for colluding with Russia. So he was an FBI guy trying to show that Trump colluded with Russia. He has been sentenced to four years in prison for checking notes, colluding with Russia. Colluding with Russia. Yeah. That's, that's what he did. He accepted $17,000 from a Russian oligarch uh, who was close to Putin. So, yeah, four years in prison, we're colluding with Russia. And as Colin points out, and I always point out, Um, they always do what they accuse you of doing. Here it is. (laughs) So Hillary was colluding with Russia, the FBI was colluding with Russia, and then even individually they were colluding with Russia. Basically, there are no Democrats who are not colluding with Russia, as far as I can tell. And so, of course, they accuse Trump. 
Well, it looks like we're going to have a soft landing maybe in the economy, and uh, I don't understand this. How is inflation going down? Does anybody understand how that's possible? Now, I get, I get that the Fed increased um, interest rates, but I thought it was mostly a money supply problem. Isn't there just too much money? <clears throat> can, can they really change inflation this dramatically in one year of interest rates? Well, why did we think that everything was going to go completely off the rails and then all it took was a few tweaks to the interest rates and then we're back in business? There's something wrong here, isn't there? There's something wrong with the, the narrative we're being given. There's no way we could, be going, we could have lower inflation. How, how is that even possible? Or are they just comparing it to the same period a few years ago, but prices are already way up? So what we're not seeing is prices going down to levels which would be a more healthy economy, right? We're just seeing that they stopped going up as fast. That's all that's happening. So they're already at way too... Everything's too expensive to afford, but it's not going up even faster than it used to be. That's it. It's not a lot to be happy about. So anyway, but it seems to be a soft landing and the stock market's responding. Well, here's what I call a Thanos update. Uh, You know, Thanos was the super um, bad guy from the Marvel movies. He could... Once he got all the jewels for his jeweled glove, he could snap his fingers and 50% of the people on the planet would die immediately. <laughs> so I like to compare Trump to Thanos uh, when, when the Democrats are talking about him because they're so hyperbolic. So now there's some guy, Miles Taylor, who's on MSNBC, saying that Trump will discover he has all of these powers <clears throat> once he's president again, And he might, quote, turn off the Internet. Now, that was on a list of many things he could do, but they're afraid that Trump might use emergency powers to turn off the Internet. Now, how do you treat that as anything but humor? Does anybody see Trump ever turning off the Internet? Ever? For any reason whatsoever? How in the world... Do you say that out loud? Like, like that's a serious possibility. Meanwhile, Liz Cheney uh, says that constitutional checks and balances won't stop Trump abuses, to which I say, well, they stopped him last time. Uh, yeah, in fact, there are so many constitutional checks and balances that he could barely get anything done. I've never seen anybody who was more handicapped by constitutional checks and balances than he was. Uh, You'd be lucky if he gets anything done. I I would worry more that he can't do anything. Like, he he can't even, like, you know, move into the office because the moving people will be, you know, all balled up somehow. Yeah. So, anyway, that's the Thanos update. Every time they accuse Trump of being a super dictator... I like to replace it with Thanos because it's just dumber. That's funnier. Oh, we got quite a few people here today. So it doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like locals is going to come back. Let's try one more time, just for fun. See if anything changed. Nope. There's a doornail. All right. Um, Congress approved legislation, this is more of the Thanos thing, that would prevent any president from withdrawing from, the United, withdrawing from NATO in the United States. Now, of course they're worried about Trump. Thirty-four minute point. Do you remember, do you remember people said that uh, the YouTube thing dies at 34 minutes? That was, that was the 34-minute mark. Did you see that? It was, it was right on the predicted 34-minute mark. What does that mean? Is this personal? <laughs> how, 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 in the world, how in the world did people predict in advance when that was going to happen? 
at the 34-minute mark. How is that possible? Does anybody have a hypothesis for that? I mean, it suggests there's some automated process. But it it doesn't really suggest there's a human watching, because why would they always pick 34 minutes? It feels like it's automated. Do you know what I think? I'm going to give you my best conspiracy theory. Now, this is based on what we knew from the Twitter files. Now, I don't have evidence to this. I'm going to make an assumption. That uh, YouTube, of course, uh, suppresses certain content. Everybody agrees with that, right? Now, not necessarily for political reasons. They might suppress it because advertisers, they know advertisers don't want to be associated with it. So it could be just business. But um, it's when I hit 4,000 viewers. See, here's what I think. I think that when my traffic hits a certain point, because the traffic hasn't changed much in years, which is really impossible, I think when it hits a certain point, they introduce a number of errors into the, into the experience to discourage people from staying. So that the glitches are just one thing. Right? The glitches would be like a list of things they're doing. Like another might be, I don't know, just you know, making me less visible. Yeah. Dan Bongino gets over 100,000 live. He gets over 100,000 live. Well, well, all right. Most of the locals people, I think, came over to, uh, to YouTube. Uh, locals is still down. All right, um, so even uh, Marco Rubio was on, he worked with Tim Kaine, so it was bipartisan, to make sure that the future president doesn't withdraw from NATO without approval from the Senate or an act of Congress. Now, that's a Thanos move, right? There, there's no way that we would have had to even really think about doing this, except they're worried about Trump destroying the world, like Thanos. <laughs> All right. Hunter Biden says the Republicans have, quote, uh, weaponized my dad's love for me. Uh, Well, that's true. The Republicans have weaponized his dad's love for him. Um, But I have breaking news related to that. Congress just voted to give that weaponized uh, dad love to Ukraine to help them in their war against uh, Putin. So the weaponized dad love will be... uh, packaged up and sent to Ukraine, where all of our other weapons are. Um, is, is anybody having... You turned it back on. Is anybody having uh, this weird experience watching Democrats say there's no evidence whatsoever that Joe Biden did anything wrong regarding Hunter? Isn't it weird to watch that? Because you know it's working. The, the, uh, the, the Democrats actually believe that there's no suggestion that you should worry about that has anything to do with the big guy. Now, I love the specific wording that Hunter used. He said, my father was not financially involved in my businesses. Is that true? That is technically true. Because he did not have a a written agreement that made his dad a financial partner in the business. It's true. It's very narrowly technically true. He didn't have a financial interest in the business. But you know what else is true? That Joe Biden did have a financial interest in Hunter. Right? Right? Because Hunter was giving him money, not for really much of what he did, just sort of existing and being something they can use. So technically, the business did not have a financial relationship with uh, Joe Biden. That's actually true. But the real question is, did Joe Biden have a financial interest with his son, who had a financial interest with the business? The answer appears to be yes. Now, the other question is, Does it matter if you can show that Joe Biden directly benefited from any of these activities? And it turns out, Jonathan Turley tells us, it doesn't matter. 
as long as the Biden family benefited, then you could say that Joe Biden took a, a bribe. Did you know that? So if, if China gave a bribe, hypothetically, to Hunter Biden, and Joe Biden was aware of it, and he wanted you know, maybe more bribes or to keep his son safe, um, you don't need the money to go into Biden, Joe Biden's pocket. It could go into Hunter Biden's pocket and stay there, and it's still bribery of the father, because the father has an interest in the son. So that, that's established, apparently that's established case law. So when the Democrats say there's no evidence, what they don't mean is there's no evidence that, that uh, Hunter was doing stuff, because that's kind of all you need, is evidence that Hunter was doing it. All right. What else is going on? 70%, this is also from Turley, 70% of Americans believe Biden did something that was you know, at least sketchy, whether it was technically illegal or not, it was sketchy, 70%. And in, in, the, in the context of 70% of the public thinking this Biden situation looks sketchy, 100% of Democrats voted against investigating it. Seventy percent of the country said, "Oh, there's something here," and a hundred percent of Democrats said, "We're not going to look into it." <laughs> That's remarkable, but not unexpected. Uh, I'm going to agree with uh, what Mike Cernovich said, which is, "Can we stop talking about Nikki Haley being in a Trump administration? Can we stop talking about her being a potential vice presidential running mate?" There's no way in the world that happens. They could not be more different Republicans. She, there would be a, a revolution if Trump picked Nikki Haley. There's no way. And, but I'm not, so my point is not that I think it's unlikely. I do. My point is it's not even worth discussing. It is so far out of the possible range of possibilities. Not worth discussing. <clears throat> but let me ask you this. What percentage of voters, uh, according to Rasmussen, uh, believe Haley is likely to end up being the, the nominee? What do you think? Very close. Yeah, 29%. 29% think she's likely to be the nominee. There you go. Well, apparently Bill Gates says something like uh, he thinks generative AI has plateaued. And he says GPT-5 will not be any better. Do you think AI has plateaued, at least in terms of generative AI? I feel like he might be right. (laughs) Now, of course, you would have to really carefully define what plateaued means. Here's what I think. I think that current technology will be able to... um, You'll be able to speak to it, and it will create scenes that didn't exist. But we can kind of do that now. So I feel like he might be right. I'm, I'm much closer to Bill Gates on this than I am to Brian Romelli, who's an expert in the field. So if you're going to listen to the expert, you should listen to him, not me. But I've got the same feeling that Bill Gates does. I, I think we plateaued. And I also think that the super intelligence is not really around the corner. It just doesn't feel like it. I just don't see anything to suggest that we've cracked the, the logical part of how to make a super intelligence. I don't think it's just an engineering problem. I think we just don't know how to do it. Maybe it's, maybe it's not logically possible. I don't know. All right, but here's some things happening. Uh, Elon Musk pointed out that Microsoft Word will now scold you if you use words that are not inclusive. So apparently it'll now fact-check a word like insane because if you're calling somebody insane, maybe you're not being inclusive. So it'll give you an error error warning that you're not being inclusive. (laughs) Now, I love the fact that Elon Musk mocks this stuff every day. It's the mocking of it that is important. You've got to mock it away. Well, remember I told you that... uh, we would find out that Israel has all kinds of tunnel thwarting technology that we didn't know about. Sure enough, they've been using robots and even drones uh, to map their tunnels. 
map the Hamas tunnels. So exactly what you thought. Apparently there are some specialized robots and specialized drones that are ideal for going down tunnels and you know seeing what's going on down there. Now the part I don't know is how close the signal has to be to the person who is controlling it, or even if they're autonomous. Because you could imagine the, the drones being autonomous, can't you? Because they would simply have to go down and map everything they could, like a Roomba, because a Roomba does that, and then just return to where they came, like a Roomba. So it's basically a drone Roomba. You could send it down, and if it doesn't get shot up, it comes back. And if it does get shot up, you, you know, send it down to kill whoever shot the last one. All right. So they've got all kinds of technologies. We'll hear more about that. Robots in tunnels. Um, the NDAA passed the House. So now uh, we've got uh, the FBI can continue surveilling Americans within a warrant. To which I say... Sounds the same as it always was. I've never believed the government had any constraints in following anybody for any reason. Because you can get a warrant for anything. You just make up any bullshit and you can get a warrant. And plus, I don't think they even use them. Uh, I feel like whoever has access to all the communications in the world, which must be somebody, I would probably look at them. I don't think anything's private anymore. Here's something AI can already do. It can convert a face in real time. So, there will be a time in the very near future in which uh, I could go on a live stream and change my face to a completely different person, even the voice, do the entire live stream as another person in their voice and looking exactly like them. That's already here. Now, the, the version I saw wasn't perfect. You would have known it wasn't real. But we're right on the border of you're not going to tell the difference. You know, probably within a year. <clears throat> so imagine how much fun my future live streams are going to be when I can uh, talk myself into any costume. Like I'll be sitting here and I'll, I'll say whatever the keyword is. I'll say, keyword, make me Trump. And then I'll just turn into Trump right in front of you. And then I'll do a joke as Trump. And I'll say, keyword, change me into Andrew Tate. And I'll be Andrew Tate for like a minute. How cool will that be? <laughs> That's probably within the year. Probably within the year. Well, Snapchat's version wasn't so good that it looked like it was a real person. But it was getting there. Uh, I'll be happy if I just don't have to wear makeup on TV. That'd be a big thing. Um, and now we also have a, basically a holodeck app. So you can put on your 3D glasses now, and you can talk into existence the environment you're in. So like a holodeck. So you can put on the 3D glasses, and you can say something like, uh, I'm sitting in a doctor's waiting room. There are two chairs. It's uh, modern decorations. It just appears. <laughs> and then you're in the doctor's waiting room. But you can put yourself anywhere. You're on the space station, and it just creates it. Uh, it doesn't need a model already. It can create it from nothing, just talking to it. How cool is that? But, you know, I wonder if I would get bored with it in, like, 10 minutes. Um, I told you that, uh, you know, I had a 3D, you know, virtual reality headset for a while. And I used it because I just wanted to know what was coming. And there were some games that, games that were really sticky and really fun, but they also gave you a headache, it made you sick to your stomach. So I found that uh, the thrill of it ran out pretty quickly because you, you sort of run through all the games that you like in a week, and then you're, you're kind of bored with it, yeah. So it doesn't last forever. I'm trying to figure out why Yemen, and it's probably the Houthis, I guess, attack, are attacking tankers in the Red Sea. There's another one. Uh, they struck a cargo ship in the Red Sea. What, what exactly are they trying to accomplish? Now, I realize it's uh, Iranian um, proxies, 
But are they doing what? Because they're not, they're not even attacking American ships. They're just attacking ships. Does anybody know chaos? But is chaos really a plan? You know, why do the Houthis care about chaos? Yeah. So I don't know what's going on there. Who knows? <clears throat> Meanwhile, Schumer has told his Democrat colleagues that he's working on a border security plan. So the Democrats are have to get serious about border security because if they don't, the Republicans will. But it's part of a deal for uh, getting the funding for Ukraine and maybe Israel, I guess. But here's what I think. On one hand, it looks like the Republicans have this, this leverage because they don't want to approve the foreign spending so much unless they get um, good border security in this country. But I've got another take on this. My take is that the Democrats really want the Republicans to push them to do this. Because I don't believe there's any chance that Chuck Schumer, specifically, we'll just pick him, you think he wants the border to be open the way it is? I, I say there's no chance he wants that. He just doesn't know how to deal with his own, his own base that has people who do want that. So I think the Democrats who have power are taking advantage of the Republicans pushing them, you know, because the Ukraine and Israel funding. So I feel like everybody who's a Republican and all of the reasonable Democrats who know that you need police and borders and stuff, I think they're all on the same side on this one. But Schumer has to make it look like, it, oh, they pushed me, I had to compromise, but at least I got that Ukraine funding for you. So I'm not sure Chuck Schumer is the bad guy on this particular topic. I think he might be on the same side as Republicans. Uh, meanwhile, this, the U.S. officials are talking about what happens to Gaza afterwards. Uh, and I guess the U.S. or some officials are pushing for Gaza to be uh, run by the Palestinian security forces, who had previously governed Gaza, but they were driven out by Hamas. Now, is it my imagination, or is that the worst idea I've ever heard? I, I, just, I just don't see Gaza being populated again. Certainly not with any um, self-governance. You know, I can't see them... First of all, I think Israel is going to make sure that it takes a long time before it's even safe to rebuild. Like they could buy themselves a few years of like, oh, it's too bad the aquifers were destroyed when we flooded the tunnels. You're going to have to wait a few years for that to clear up. Or, uh, the only way we could build, rebuild there is if we had a desalinization plant for $2 billion, and nobody wants to pay for that, so I guess it's too unsafe. Not enough fresh water. So I think Israel is going to do this long, long delaying tactic to just keep it unpopulated. But in the long run, I can't see any way that Israel doesn't manage it directly. Yeah, I'm not even sure that Palestinians will be allowed back in. They probably have to be at some point, but maybe not. Maybe not. Make it an aqua park. <laughs> Is Israel winning? Well, depends what time frame you pick. If you pick the immediate time frame, yes. If you say, what does this does do to Israel's place in the world? Does it get better or worse in the long run? I think the answer is, it's not getting better. I mean, this, this is like a little speed bump they're taking care of, um, as horrible as it was. It, you know, if you look at the entire arc of history, October 7th won't be the biggest deal in, in the entire arc of Jewish history. Anyway, so... Yeah, the Muslim world backlash will be epic. Well... You know, I don't know how to predict that from my perspective because there does seem to be a lack of genuine caring for the Palestinian people on behalf of a lot of other Arabs in, in the area. 
So we don't know exactly how many people are going to be against Israel versus how many are mad at the Palestinians for creating the situation in the first place. Oh, Israel's battle testing the F-35? How interesting. Uh, Losing a lot of troops? Well, here's what winning looks like in this case. I don't think Israel... Um, can say they lost even if they have lots of losses of troops. Because they're just going to get it done at whatever cost it costs. So Israel's decided to pay the price. That's that difference between wanting and deciding. Israel did not want to fix things in Gaza. They simply decided. So if, if casualties are high, they'll still do it. It's just not going to be a variable that stops them from doing it. We created this in the 40s. Yeah, I would say design is destiny. I think that when Israel was created, it largely guaranteed everything that's happened after that. How is the F-35 faring against paragliders? So it seems to be working, all right? Uh, oh, is, is Yemen where Palestinians were integrated in? Is that why it didn't work? I don't know the situation in Yemen at all. Ukraine has lost 400,000 troops and 600,000 escaped, so they don't have to be troops. All right. Um, Lots of copium with the F-35. All right. Uh, Well, that's all I have today. Is there any uh, topic I missed? It's like a slow Friday. Everybody's ready to go Christmas shopping. Um, YouTubers, get on Locals. Get extra stuff there. And if you all purchased your copy of Reframe Your Brain and the second version of How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big, I would get it now, because I don't know if you can get the hardcover, especially if you wait too long. So make sure... uh, Yes, there will be a Christmas show. I will do a Christmas version of the live stream. All right. You bought two so far? Great. I guarantee that if you buy either of these books for people who can read a book, that they will be happy with the gift. And in some cases, it will totally change their lives. In fact, most of the time. Yeah. Uh, if you see in the comics, people are buying you know, two and four copies, five copies. It's because they've read it and they know the value it, it creates. You give this to God's debris freely. All right. With hat and beard on Christmas? Oh, I don't know about the beard, but maybe the hat. Define generative AI. Oh, that's the right question. Um, when I think of generative AI, I think the ones that can, say, fill in a picture, or you tell it to make you a picture of this and it does it, or you talk a movie into existence... Uh, I see those as generative AI. What I don't know is if generative AI includes uh, sentence completion. Does it? Does anybody know? If you say generative AI, does that include the large language model where it just predicts the next words in the sequence? Or is it separate from that process? It does include it? Okay. So basically it's just the large language models and generative AI are kind of the Venn diagrams are mostly the same, would you say? Large language model and generative AI. Are those, does the Venn diagram just overlap? Same thing or a little bit different? Different things. I'm being told that they're different, but how different? Are they like 80% the same? I don't know. 
They're all models, different things. Okay, I guess we don't know. We'll leave that question for later. All right. Oh, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Oh, I didn't know that. Generative Pre-Trained. So GPT is generative by its nature. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for coming over, locals. Sorry about the feed. I think they're still under a hacker attack over at the Rumble Network. Uh, but at least at least you had a backup. And we'll see you tomorrow, and I'm going to be doing my man cave tonight. Locals people know what that is. And if you want to follow Dilbert, make sure you're doing it on X or on Locals. Bye for now. Thanks for joining. The best live stream ever. <laughs>